Hey guys, so what we're speaking on a little bit of, I want to give some mindset stuff and then go into reaching out to people today a little bit. And please feel free to chime in. But we were talking about conditioning and how like we were speaking of people that maybe get on the call and they did a really good job of, due to age, right? But I don't even like to use age um, because I, I wasn't brought up in the computer generation. Um, and I trust me, it's frustrating at times, but I got to learn. You know what I mean? And so what happens though is we, we've been taught in school to study the memory, memory, right? So you read something, you memorize it, you take the test, you get the grade, you pass, you get your diploma, you move on. And that's not how it works. So what I'm trying to say here is if we study to understand, okay, that's, that's true. So, so study to understand, don't just study to understand, study to apply, right? So with conditioning and mindset, here's some good movies I was telling Steve and Laura earlier to check out, guys. Okay, um, there's some series on, like, I think it was a History Channel. And go back and watch them over and over again. The reason I want you to watch these, these men, they were mostly men, okay? What they did, they had crazy circumstances put against them. And they didn't let their environment control them. They used their mind. And Hershey, when he did this, there, there's three series that I watched. Uh, one's called The Men That Built America. Okay. I don't know who that is, sir. So the men who built America, okay. Number two, then it was the the um, the frontiersmen that built America, and then the food that built America. And one that always stands out to me was Hershey. He had built a million dollar empire, sold this million dollar empire of chocolatiers in New York City, took the profits. He had a vision, and he literally everybody told him he was crazy. Like Laura, I just tell Laura the story. She's that's crazy. I said, yeah, because nobody else could see it. Well, he took that money and he wanted to create a utopic environment for people that work for him. So he goes into Pennsylvania, buys thousands of acres, maybe millions, I don't remember, of land and names it Hershey, Pennsylvania. Now, why is this crazy? He didn't even have the recipe to make milk chocolate. It didn't exist. And that's what he was doing. That was going to be his thing. Okay, to provide for all these people. So he took everything he had and he dumped it in and said, here we go. I can see it. I know I can have it. And everybody told me it's nuts. Okay, now why am I sharing this with you guys? Well, I was reading some stories and they were talking about kittens. And they would take cats as soon as they were born and they would put these cats into an environment that had no vertical lines. They were circular. So they couldn't see vertical lines areas. Do you understand what I'm saying? And they were in this environment 24 hours a day for six straight weeks. Now you see, you don't see with your eyes, you see through them. Your eyes are a lens. You see how your mind, your brain is the images that are stored in the brain, how it's conditioned. And I'm going to share, I'm going to share some examples of what I mean by this. And then I'm going to tie it into what we're doing here. I promise. So these cats, when they took them out of that environment and they had conditioned their mind, this is called imprinting. So have you ever heard of a duck or a chicken and as soon as they hatch what they see, they imprint, that's the mother, do you follow me, right? Regardless of how they're treated, it doesn't matter. It's stored in the subconscious mind, the emotional mind and boom. So when they put those kittens out of that circular environment and put them into an environment that had like vertical lines like chairs and couches, they kept running headfirst into the freaking items. <laughs> because they weren't conditioned to see vertical lines, okay? So they literally kept running into stuff. Now, why am I sharing that? They had airplanes, cargo planes up in Canada. And these planes would fly crate and freight and all this stuff and in bad snowstorms, what they learned to do is they would fly along the interstate systems because the airports would get backed up. And if they ran out of gas, guess where they would land? On the interstate. Now, check this out. They landed on the interstate and freaking people were driving their cars into those cargo planes. And the people that lived, which wasn't a lot, the cops would interview them. What the heck were you doing? And they, ones that lived said, we didn't see it. When's the last time you saw a cargo plane on an interstate? Have you ever pulled out in front of a motorcycle maybe, right? or a biker, down here it's golf carts, okay? But I'm not conditioned to see a golf cart. Do you understand? I'm not making excuses. 
It's just not something you see on the road all the time. Now, why am I sharing this with you? Do you see how the mind got conditioned one way or another? It doesn't matter. Okay. So what I want to share is, you know, how many times do you guys say, well, I want to build to NMD or whatever it is. It doesn't matter. Maybe you just want to be a sales coordinator. Maybe you just want to help a couple people get on the product, right? Okay. It doesn't matter. Whatever your goal is, I don't care. I just, I want to give you some examples, but we say, well, I don't think I can do that. Right. And so what are some excuses that we've all told ourselves? And I want to get them on paper. That's why I got the paper out here, right? So what are some excuses? I don't have time. Okay. I don't know enough people. Okay. I can't find team members. Nobody wants on the product. Keep going. It's too much money. Okay, keep going. I keep getting no's. You can't put fruits and veggies in a capsule. I, I already take on multivitamin. This is a pyramid scheme. Oh, that is so true. Okay, so let's, let's dissect some of these, right? It's all mindset, guys. Let me ask you a question. So I became an NMD. Do you guys think I got any of these questions? You got them all. All the time, right? So you know how they say posturing and being comfortable with things, right? So long story short. Okay, so um, I can't even read this. Excuses, right? Okay, so we got that. Don't know enough people. I actually know a lady who's in the dead of Texas. who lives an hour and a half from any city. I'm talking even little cities. She has to drive an hour and a half to the grocery store. Oh, that's crazy. And she's at QNMD. Wow. I met a lady when I don't have time. I know because I had a couple of businesses that I was working full time in my clinic. I didn't have time either. But it's funny because when you find a reason why, you make the time. Right? So I met a lady who has homeschools, which I have a whole different respect for now. 14 kids. And she made an MD. So I'm not saying that to make anybody feel bad. Let's just take the excuses away. And my point is, if somebody else did it, why can't we do it? Do you follow me? All you gotta or do it's, is uh, to see. Oh, wait a second. All you gotta do is condition your mind that you can do it, instead of conditioning your mind that you can't do it. Like the cats couldn't see the lines, right? Just condition your mind where you see the lines, right? Mike, what were you gonna say, brother? I was gonna say like all those excuses. Like, um, learn how to be able to come back with a good answer of saying, you know, like cancer is actually really expensive. So it's very important to take care of your health because you don't want a future disease. Kind of like coming back with making it more relevant to their life. Yeah, you could, Mike, but I mean, that might be a little far, and it's not bad. Well, that, a that example is a little far-fetched for sure, yeah. but try got the point. If they say that to you, do you know how much this coffee costs me? Right. So it could be 250. You got to give them examples in their own life. So what do I mean by that? So the quad is three dollars and fifty cents a day. That's a straight Americano, and a kid gets it for free and shakes. And why do I drink this? Because you want energy. So, like, what if we could help them with that? You follow me? Oh, you drink beer. You drink. You smoke cigarettes. Well, what if you just pluck some out? What if you took some garbage out of your shopping cart? Don't say that, you'll offend them, but you know, give them some examples of things that they're buying and how you can put this in, right? And so when you said you can't get fruits and veggies in the capsules, man, Mike, you know, I, I thought the total same thing, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Like, I was like, I don't know how, that doesn't make any sense. You know, why can't I just get a multivitamin? And then I had somebody <laughs> take a lid and they go, well, have you ever noticed how that lid locks? And You're so, putting images in. Yeah, so Mike, I had to, you're, when you're typing, I've got to mute you, brother, because we can hear you. Sorry. But yeah, so you want to make sure that you're linking what you want. So with team, here's the question I always got to ask you. Would you want to follow you? Okay. Does that make sense? So, and if you wouldn't, that's okay. I'm not beating up on anybody. I, I wouldn't have followed me at one point in time either. Okay. 
So I started looking at leadership. I started watching people that were leading and I became what we call an intelligent follower and I incorporated things that I really enjoyed at what they were doing. You know, and it used to be my way is the highway. And then I was like, well, that's stupid because everybody thinks different. So if I didn't answer a question, maybe my cat or Misty or Laura or didn't listen to you, well, then you probably wouldn't want to listen to me either. Right. So it's do unto others as Christ. I just had this conversation with my little girl. We had a little spat last night. So, you know, and, and I was like, would you want someone to treat your home the way you and those kids treated that home? And she was like, no. I said, well, would you want somebody to come in and smash something in your bedroom and tear your bedroom up and let your beardy get away? And da -da -da. she's like, no. I said, well, you can't do things like that. Even if other people are doing things, right? I said, you have to be a leader. So if I'm showing up to calls, my team shows up to call. If I'm not, they're not, right? So it's doing that do, right? But, you know, so what I'm trying to show here, get the excuses on paper that you have and you're telling yourself. And then tell yourself the exact opposite. That's what Misty was working so hard a couple weeks ago, is developing our stories. And we're going to share with you, like, we made a call yesterday, okay? And, um, you know, and it, we learned a lot. It was really good, actually. And sometimes the calls, they don't go the way you want, but that's where you learn the most. Right. See, if you're just making easy calls, you, you don't learn anything from that. It was all my setbacks that were allowed, allowing me to get elevation in life because i you just have to take the nose guys rhinoceros skin get real thick skin get you get the nose you know what i want you guys to start doing when somebody tells you a no you've heard garrett say this and me you, we just haven't effectively communicated the why to them yet right but i look at them like kids how would your guys little kids come to you when they're four and five do they just quit asking you for something or they ask you all the time right they think no is K-N-O-W, how? Like they're going to ask until they get what they want. That's how I got my car from Laura. <laughs> all you have to do is the same thing. So we've all done those things effectively in life, right? You know, you've had something you really wanted. Laura, you said you, how you wanted, you know, your daughter to move in and right, you made the room, and right? So you don't know how it's going to happen. Be specific enough that's a very, I've learned those lessons too, by the way, I got what I asked for and I wasn't specific what I asked for. And I was like, Oh my God. You know, I was like, I got goosebumps telling you that because we have to be so specific in what it looks like. Okay. And, and so you, we always get what we're asking for. The problem is we're not usually asking, we're asking for what we don't want. So it, that's what shows up. <laughs> right. So it, we're all creative beings. We're always, cre things are always coming to us. If we're not liking it, just pay attention. And then if you get the excuses out of you and put it on paper, right? And then just do the opposite. I have an abundance. Guys, the internet, are you kidding me? You can build a business anywhere in the world now, right? I mean, there's 3 billion people, I think, on Facebook. That's freaking nuts. And that's what that lady did. The lady I know, she goes into town a couple times a week and freaking does her stuff on the internet in town. And with two young kids. And that just inspired me. I was like, well, God dang, if she's doing that, I can do, you know what I mean? I can find ways. I just got to get creative sometimes. That's all. You know what I mean? But I thought that was so amazing. You know, the, the, again, cost, things like the, a pyramid. Let me go over this. So my dad said that one to me. He says, well, son, it's a pyramid, even though he had amazing results. Don't argue with people when they say that. I simply said to my dad, I said, dad, you mean... You mean, well, you work at Carbide, it's this big chemical company. He said, yeah. And I said, so, and I literally drew it out. I said, you mean, so you mean a pyramid? I think you're saying structure instead of, you know, scam. And I said, but so dad, your company, there's a CEO. And then I said, then you got, I don't know, international managers. Steve, you're a big company, right? You got regional, district, managers you know, freaking plant managers, department managers, workers, all the way down, right? Who gets paid the most on this? CEO, right? And then the water trickles down, the money trickles down, right? And I said, and dad, you were down here somewhere, showed up an hour every day to work early to plan your day. 
got awards. 42 years in, they fired you. You thought this structure was safe, didn't you? Because that's every corporation in America, isn't it? Walmart, Kroger's, Myers, it doesn't matter. They're all structured this way. And I said, didn't they hire somebody who didn't even know your job, brought you in, brought them in to do your job? I said, here's how our company works. Here's how network marketing works, the profession. It's upside down, pyramid. And every single person starts right there. So if you want fairness and equality, which everybody cries about these days, let's just get real, right? Everybody wants something for nothing. You earn this, okay? You start there. I don't give a poo if you're white, black, purple, polka dot, uh, Italian, Catholic, it, it, what, Hindu, it don't matter. You start right there and you start inspiring and educating yourself. You develop your story, your product story, your why, and you start building a team and everybody, every single person can reach a the top. There's no limitation. The only limitation is in our own mindset. So if you really are disgusted and we want to be real with the results and all the crap going on, get off your little horse and go build yourself. As Jeff Roberti says, get a checkup from the neck up. Are we doing calls? Are we customer call? How many people did the summer uh, thing that, or the gold mine thing that Misty spoke about, right? How many did that? And it's okay. It's not good or bad. I'm just saying. Are our actions equal to what we, our desires and wants are? Because you got to set big goals. If you don't, you'll do this all the time. You go up and down, up and down, up and down, right? If you're not inspired, that's when people peter out, fizz out, okay? But when you have people and they're, they're telling you this crap on social media, right? It's not fair, all this stuff. Show them this. Like, I agree with you. I don't think things are, I don't even want things. Like literally, I don't care. You live in America. Every person can build something beautiful here. Here's what we learned to do. Instead of taking 100% of the responsibility, I've been able to teach thousands of people and I get 1% of thousands of people's efforts. Would that make more sense than going 100% on the time, all the time? When you're, and if you work for a big corporation, they see cutting your wages and all this type of stuff, or they fire you? AK lets you go, right? And I, I've been let, I've, done, I've been, God, guys in chiropractic, I've been fired thousands of times. <laughs> it's probably why I don't give a poo anymore. Misty, how many times do you guys get fired in your office from patients? It's a weekly, it's a daily event, isn't it? <laughs> Never. 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 <laughs> it isn't funny when these people get amazing results and they still fire you. They're looking to fire you. Like, that's why it doesn't affect me. I don't care. Like, as soon as you fall in love with this process of getting better and get rid of the result aspect, your life becomes so much freer, guys. You're literally taking bricks out of your book bag that you're carrying around. Just don't worry about it. Just say next. Detach from the result and fall in love with getting better. And what will happen is all those people will start coming to you. I promise you, it's funny how it starts to work. It really, really is. Misty's starting to really see that, but she's put in a crap load of work and she didn't start that way. <laughs> she's been doing it lately. And you can see how many, how many of you guys have noticed the changes in her? It's obvious, right? And I promise you it hasn't happened by accident. And there's tough nights and days and, but you just move forward. And, and the key is, I met a 95-year-old dude who made NMD, guys. So, like, age has nothing to do with it. Colonel Sanders said that, too. Nothing to do with it. So, you guys, Misty, I know you had some things you want to go over. Do you want to share what we did and how we kind of fell on our face, but what we learned from it? Sure. Sorry, give me one second. My kiddo is getting ready to... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any, yeah go ahead. Misty, do you guys have any questions about any of that stuff? This is something like what I do, guys, if somebody ever says a pyramid scheme, scheme to you or whatever, honestly, do learn this, rehearse it, and do it right in front of them. Because here's why. If you show them this, you cleared the diversion in their mind, the object, the objective that they had, what they objected at, and you take the objection away when you've changed the picture. That's what I'm trying to do with you guys. I'm trying to show you your objections and how to change them. I have one for the um, 
you can't fit all the fruit and vegetables in a capsule. I used to do tobacco presentations. Okay. And a lot of times when I did them for kids, you know, one of the things I would tell people is there's over 450,000 chemicals in cigarette smoke. And the little kids would always say, yeah, and none of them are good. Uh, the kids would always go, um, how do they fit them all in a cigarette? Well, they do, you know. Wow. You know, Mike or Lance, that is, wow, that's like crazy. I mean, thank you. Um, man, here's something. How's the FDA approve that? That's what I always wanted to know. It's all who pays them, right? That's they, exactly right. right. But, you know, I also learned the reason the cigarettes are so addicting is that the tobacco industry learned. They started to I believe vaporize, like they literally would vaporize sugar underneath the tobacco leaves as they would hang to dry into the cigarettes. And it was so much more addicting by doing that. Oh, yeah. But when you when people say to me, Mike and, and Lance, you know, about the capsules, I'll say, well, you know, that's a great question. So I don't ever argue. I've trained myself to like get excited when people ask okay. me, right? So I don't want like, that's that's a pattern interrupt. So Mike, if you ask me a question, I go, well, Mike, you're just, right? Like, I don't even have to say anything. You're not going to listen to me. Well, what if I go, Mike, that is a great question. And I think uh, okay. the same freaking thing you did, but here's what I want to share. See, it's my posture. That's what they call posturing up, changing, okay? And I said, but here's what I learned. If I was cremated right now, how much of me would be left? <laughs> so what Juice Plus did, they just got rid of the stuff, like the fiber and the water and the sugar, mostly space, space between molecules, and they put that into the capsule. And just like Lance, I didn't know there were 450,000 chemicals in a cigarette, but they fit them all in there somehow, right? And, and so it, it, I don't know how this thing works, guys but it works. And because it works, I don't have to know how it works. How many things do you do in your life? Do you guys know how a car really works and runs? No, but you get advantage. See, whether you understand how something works or not, it still works. So you don't have to know all the science behind this stuff. See, I'm trying to take your excuses away. <laughs> oh, so how would you uh, like uh, say, Oh, I want research on uh, fruits and veggies. It's like, but you don't want research uh, for that McDouble that you buy every day from McDonald's. Yeah, but you can't offend them because that's what you, you see what I'm saying? That That's offensive, right? You just told them they're wrong. No, I'm saying, how do you utilize that? Like, how do you? Um, yeah, right. So what I said is, you know, I just make a joke of myself. Like, Mike, I, you know, man, when I got introduced to this, I, I, I just couldn't believe it was that simple. Okay. You know, fruits and vegetables, and I forgot the capsule. <laughs> but like literally my thick head, I couldn't get through that because I had to go be a doctor and all this stuff. And I realized, my God, every doctor's office for prevention says, first thing, eat more fruits and vegetables. Like it doesn't say anything, like literally guys, it doesn't say take a multivitamin, right? But the problem is everybody takes a multivitamin. The cats don't see the circle or the lines, right? So everybody's doing it. So that makes it right right? You follow me? No, but questions will, it'll deter them. The boom. Oh, wow. I didn't see that vertical line. Oh, that's what you're doing with questions. You're getting them to observe the reality they don't even see. That's what a good comedian does. They take what is in the public's, what the public is doing. They literally make fun of them and get them to laugh at theirself. That's what a great, that, this, and the other thing that is really neat, go back, I would have never, do you guys know who Ron White is? I freaking think that guy is so funny. I bought a DVD 10 years ago on him, and it was 20 years prior to that, about 30 years ago. He was telling the, the, the joke of being drunk in public, and it was terrible. Absolutely terrible. Now, he said the words... But do you know how many times he rehearsed that to literally control an audience, to get them to laugh at a certain time? To, like, if you, he said it, but he didn't believe it. He didn't posture it. And what he did is he created that and conditioned that over time, over years, to where now the guy calls with shots and makes whatever he wants to make. That's how valuable the same words were because of the meaning he applied to them. The why, the story. You follow me? But he rehearsed, rehearsed, rehearsed. 
He didn't need to do, guys, you just don't get good at something doing it one time. I know you were taught that. I know your school taught you to take the test and get the grade and you know it. I get that. That's not how this works. It's getting your butt kicked in and learning how to alter that approach with it. So Misty, would you ready now? Yes. Share. So there was a patient of ours who had ordered the um, duo for herself and got the children's health study for her son. And they, um, they came back and said, oh my gosh, Dr. White, we started taking it. And all of a sudden I realized I'm cleaning my kitchen and then my son's cleaning his room. And we were like, where's all this energy coming from? And they realized it was from the Juice Plus. So they were so excited about it. Then her husband wanted to try it. So he started taking some of hers and they have another kid too. They're, they're older kids, but they have another kid. And so they, um, they all started taking it. And so they had, they wanted to get a second order because they want to run out. And so they're just doing the duo, like I said, and just really cool results just from the duo, which I love hearing. Um, and then she came in and got the second order and I got the order form and I said, did you talk to her about the business? Because now they have two orders, right? And now they could get a discount and, and share with other people. And they already have this great product story. And so, cause when I've been doing my summer crush stuff, we've been talking about um, some of the verbiage that Beth has been sharing kind of, it just popped into my head. See, the more input you get, the more opportunities you see. And so when he told me that, I thought she's got a great product story already. So let's, we should talk to her about the business. So I talked with Kenny and I said, let's do gold mining. She's an existing customer, but I want to present this to her as, as an option and see what she says before I place the second order. And so that's what we did. We gave her a call and um, she answered and she's like, Miss I only have a couple minutes. And I said, okay, no problem. I'll just make sure we keep it real quick if, if, if that's okay. She's like, yeah, that's okay. So I, I added Kenny to the call. He shared my, a little bit of my story and how, how he helped me with it. And, and knowing I told him she's real, she's real busy and he's like, okay. So he already knew to kind of share that part of my story too, which was good. Um, and at the end of it, she said, I'm not going to sell anything. I don't have time. I don't have any time. I got to go. I have a, my mother-in-law's got, um, dementia and I got to go. And Dr. Kenny was like, oh my gosh, God bless you. So sorry to hear that. You know, you know, thank you for your time today and, you know, have a great day. And that was it. And it kind of deflated me. I was like, oh, like, I don't want her to be upset that we called her. And she seems, it's, she seemed kind of, he's like, no, 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 no. He's like, this is good. This is good. I'm like, is that good? He's like, it's good. <laughs> so we started talking about it and dissecting it really. And, he, and so he, he shared with me that that's, you know, that's where she's at right now. And, and, and she's struggling with all that stuff. And, and thank goodness we're getting her the juice plus so she can survive through that. But she's in crisis mode, literally. And she couldn't even hear us. She couldn't hear it because it, she just went whoosh, and she put up her wall, right? Nope, not doing anything else. Um, so we just stopped at that point. We didn't try to press or anything like that or try to convince her or tell her how, no, 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 you don't have to spend a ton of time or anything like that. We just, we just pulled back and said, that's okay. Absolutely. Thank you for your time. And done. Then I texted her and I just said, I thanked her again. Thank you so much for your time. I know you're crazy busy with your mother-in-law and with your family and work. Um, if there's ever anything I can do to help you, please let me know. And she sent me back a text that said, thank you so much, Missy, with emojis and stuff. So she was, oh, it's all good. But um, I just, it was one of those, like, I went, <gasps> and that's my paradigm going, oh, no, she's she's upset. And and so that was me trying to, I have to fix that, right? So that's a good thing now. I know that, that I've got to kind of work on that and then just try to figure out, okay, where was she coming from? Where is she at? And how can I help her? See how she's trying to serve her? But why, like, Misty, thank you for being transparent with that, right? <laughs> Because, you know, at first she's, I mean, like, right. I remember when I learned these things, guys, I'm like, God, do I want to tell my team or my staff that I felt like that? Well, that's how everybody feels, guys. Whenever you get spooked in a situation doesn't play out the way we think, this is the, so, right. So remember how I always go over mindset. Remember, this is the mind, right? So we come from here in our paradigms that Misty said, that's our pattern. That's our belief. That's our conditioning, right? That's where the cats couldn't see the vertical lines, guys. Now, remember what Misty called this gold mining? right? So this mother, guys, what we did afterwards, you want to be with your upline because your upline is not connected emotionally to that person. So if you're not emotionally connected, is it easier to step back and logically see a situation? 
Do you follow me? Because Misty went into, and this is not, I'm not picking on Misty. This is all of us. Oh my God. Are they mad at me? I can't believe they're, we're making up stories here. We're not, that's not logic. There's no, there, there's not a single point of reference right there. What I heard from that situation, oh my God, this mom has kids that are teenagers and she's taking care of a demented mother in law, right? Like, oh my God. So the first thing I thought of is how can we help that mother? How can we explain to this lady that the reason she's got all this energy is because when juice plus comes in and you reduce inflammation, the metabolism resets. Some people, it's their constipation goes away. It resets, right? All these things. Well, we have people that are taking this that have Parkinson's. That's inflammation in the brain and they get shaky. Well, dementia is, it's also inflammation in the brain, but it's where your memory cells are in your hippocampus. Okay. So if we can take the pictures and relate how if we drop inflammation, in her case, the metabolism reset, they had more energy, they felt better, da, da, da. What if, question, what if this would help that woman's mother-in-law halt the progression of dementia? What if she saw improvement with it, right? What if it went away? But if the worst case is it just stopped from getting worse, how much stress would that take off that mom? How much time then would she have to put into her children and then back into her marriage? Do you see how I'm trying to help you see a vision far bigger than the situation that was at hand? Now, did we try to sell her any? No. Like we just, Misty did awesome. I'm going to get on. I said, just get on the phone and clear the air as soon as you can. Thank you for hopping on. We had no idea. You know what I mean? God bless you. If I can do anything to help you, let me know. Period. That right there is all that woman needed. Right? Because do you think that woman's running around just ragged and just like frenetic and freaking, you know what I mean? Like not any time for herself. So why would she want to add a business when she doesn't have any time for herself right now? There's no why. But if we can slowly educate her, if we can get more results in her family, and then her mother-in-law started on it and got results, I'm going to tell you right now, that's a woman that literally will go to bat in war when she sees what that does for her family. That's somebody said, no, you don't understand. I saw, I mean, you fall, all you guys are there, but now it's getting other people that you love to see that. And what I'm trying to say is we can dissect it on a conscious level. It was easy for me to do that for Misty. I wasn't emotionally attached to that woman like Misty is. So that's why you want to do these calls, guys, so that the person above you will hear things. And at first, Misty didn't even hear that she was demented. Right, Misty? And then, but I said, but she heard mother-in-law. I didn't hear the mother-in-law. So we really filled in gaps for each other is my point. And I was like, oh my God, she's got dementia. No wonder she's stressed out. Okay, well, how can we formulate a plan to help her see this with her mother-in-law? You know what I mean? Like, I get it. That's just, I find holes and I'm like, okay, how can we help put, put into that hole to help that person out? That's where I want you to come from, if that makes sense. Sometimes it might not be anything to do with the product at all or the business. They just need to know you care. They need to be moved emotionally in the subconscious. And when the time's right, the image gets placed here to coalesce, all of a sudden they, they jump on board. Is that, that, go ahead. Very, very, very much exactly that thing. So I was talking with a lady and she's a trainer and I didn't know it. She sells um, Color Street too. And so, but she's a, she's a personal trainer. And I had no idea. So we're, we're, she's showing me the nails and stuff and how they work. And she gave me samples and actually it's pretty cool. I had no idea. But anyway, <laughs> Uh, so I bought a couple <laughs> besides that we, uh, we were at dinner after our golf thing and um, and we were talking and then I found out she was a trainer and my brain instantly went partner right because she's a personal trainer um, and so I started talking with I just kind of brought it up and started talking about it and I could see kind of a disconnect like not really interested and so I didn't I didn't push any further I didn't I didn't bring up anymore I invited her to call and said if you want to come check it out come check it out you know and send her, the, send her the link. Well, we started talking again later and her son came up and he's autistic. 
and he doesn't eat anything. He hardly eats anything. He's, he's, he was in a home for six years. That's how autistic he is. And so um, she said, I started doing this business because he won't leave my side. She brought him back home again. She said, I just couldn't do it anymore. It was tearing my heart up. And so she brought him home and he won't leave her side. So she started this business from home, right? These are the kind of people that we, that we reach so easily because they need this, right? So I just told her, um, oh my goodness. I said, I would love to be able to share with you a little bit more about Juice Plus because we have the gummies for kids and for people who can't eat the capsules and it gets that fruits and vegetables and berries in their diet. She said, you just spoke to my heart. She said, that is such a struggle for me. Do you listen for those gaps? You listen for those places where you can serve and add value and that's where you come from and then they hear you. So when I, when I said in my brain, that was about me, partner, right? But when she told me about her son and, and his, you know, him being that severely autistic, I knew instantly he's not getting what he needs in his diet. She said he has gout, he has high cholesterol, he has arthritis already, he's 34. Oh. And so I just said, oh my gosh, I'm so happy we talked today. And she is so excited to get the products. She may never become a partner and that's okay, but I still helped her in the way that she needed. Yeah. So That's the heart of hearts, not the pump. What Missy did this, she spoke to the woman's heart of hers, her core value. And here's the thing, though. The gold is in the follow-up. So she, did, she didn't quit, right? You know what I mean? Like, because you don't know. You know, I just had a lady, and I've known her through chiropractic college. Um, she reached out to me on Facebook just two days ago. Hey, I, I need to know more about this. So I messaged her back that day to get back to me. The next day I messaged her again in the morning because she's busy with two kids that don't eat. And I messaged her and she goes, oh my God, yes, I'm available today at this time. So I called her in between like 12 calls, guys. I called her and I said, I don't have the full gamut, but I have this. Are you still in practice? I am. Oh my God. You know, hey, Heather, I don't know if this makes sense to you, but just so you know, one of the things I struggle with is we had to pay for our own insurance. And I don't know if you know this, but our company, because she goes, oh, I can't do MLMs in Wisconsin and this and that. I said, oh, really? Okay. Well, I didn't know that. I said, man, that's, huh. I'll have to look into that. But I just said, you know, I said, I have a lot of friends doing standard process. And they were doing this. And I said, but I said, I introduced them to this. And it's simple. There's not a this or that. And you can get medical benefits. Full benefit. She goes, what did you say? And I was like, yeah. I said, look, hey, it might not be right for you. It's okay. But I just want to let you know your options. And if it ever opens it, she orders two quads berries, shakes, and something else. And she will become a partner. I guarantee it when she sees it does for her kids. But you got to put it out there. And I followed up with her three or four times before she got back to me. And we think that we're building, right? Our paradigm, as Misty was saying, it's my noise. That's what I'm thinking. Oh my God, they're, no, they're just busy. Like we don't know that that woman had a demented, you know what I mean? Uh, Mother-in-law. Like you don't know that somebody has Parkinson's. You don't know that somebody has diabetes. You don't know somebody just lost their job or that, you know, something broke in their house or their freaking tire blew off their car or they can't make a payment and they don't know what the hell they're gonna do, right? Sometimes you just listen and love them and they remember that. They signify you as being different and they come to you when the time's right. And don't be afraid to bring up the opportunity at that moment, even though you did it in the past. You know what I mean? I do that all the time. You know, I heard your car just broke down. God bless you. You know, like, I, I don't know how you okay. Do you need something? Well, I don't know how I'm going to pay for this. Well, you know, there were some things I was dealing with. I didn't know either, but somebody, sh I, I shared this with you before and I'm only sharing it with you again because I care and someone cared enough about me to tell me over and over until they get through my thick skull and a big afro on my head, which trust me, you need freaking power shears to get in. And I'll use humor to break up the situation, right? But they feel my heart because I truly am trying to do what's best for them. And I'm okay with them telling me no. I'm okay with that. It doesn't hurt my feelings. That's them, not me. It only becomes me when I let it in me. Do you want to follow a leader that just asks you one time? 
think that's a leader? Think about that. What would a leader do? They say, it's too tough, I'm not jumping in that foxhole, too tough, Let's, we'll stay back here. Why do you love that leader? Why do you love Braveheart, right? Like you can't watch that movie and not get freaking out. I mean, it's kind of gross, right? But like you watch that daggone thing and that guy, I mean, like, dude, I got goosebumps just mentioning Braveheart, right? Because he got nations to follow him because he wanted freedom, which is what we can give people here. So maybe you're watching that movie, Steve, you're Braveheart. You're William Wallace. You follow me? Like when you're watching a movie like that, you're that star. See yourself as a star. You know, if you're a lady, maybe Erin Brockovich. I don't care. It doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Like she freaking, you know, all the, it doesn't matter. How do you need to situate it in your mind to create success for you, to help others? You get to choose that. You get to choose that image, but choose it. Don't wait for it. Don't put it out there. Put it in here and in here and never stop reaching for that. You inspire people just by what you do. I had a 75-year-old man, wonderful doc, in Juice Plus, contact me the other day. He's still practicing. He's like, what the heck are you doing? And I just shared with him what I'm doing, how I've changed my life. I didn't know that was inspiring, but I guess it was. To me, it wasn't. I just expected that to happen. You follow me? Like, you have to expect it. Expectation reels it into you. Whatever your desire, it's like throwing that rope, that, that fishing line in that water, guys. You got you to gotta reel that fish in. That's expectation. So if you condition your mind to always expect to succeed, does that mean you're not going to fail? Does that mean, Misty, did we get our butt handed to us initially yesterday? <laughs> right? But I said, what did I say? We could have made how many God dang excuses because I've been full on calls every freaking day, guys. Okay. And like, I was like, no, we're going to do this because I want to make sure that we can come to our team and tell them we did this. And I, she's mining gold. We got gold nuggets about that lady and how we can help that woman. And we got gold nuggets for ourselves, but we had to go do the panning. And we, how many, how many excuses could we have made, Misty? You overslept, right? I mean, yeah. like, I mean, like, you know, you're running around with your hair on fire, probably, right? I, I have like four calls in 25 minutes trying to buy something with homeschooling my kid all at the same time. My wife's not here. Could I have made excuses? I can't do this right now. No, I gave my word. My word means everything to me. And when I tell somebody something, that's what it is. I'll figure it out. No excuses. Do I get my ass kicked a lot of times? Absolutely, I do. <laughs> I do. Truly. Nobody, they, you just get up one more time. That's all. Make one more call. Maybe, maybe sometimes you can make 10 more calls to leave on a good call. <laughs> but just do it. And then you leave on a good place and you're excited to go back to that place again. Does that make sense? I just want to give you guys some tangible things. You know what I mean? That you can take. And then now, how are you going to reach out to people this week, right? How can we use this stuff? That's all. How can you get a hold of Misty or myself or whomever to help you help your team? Stop I'm with the excuses. Laura, I think we're due for some gold mining calls. We'll call your customers. We'll find a time this week and set it up and we'll call some of your customers, okay? Do you guys know who Joseph Campbell is? He wrote a book called The Hero of a Thousand Faces. And his, one of his famous quotes was, the cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek. One of my favorite images or scenes in a movie is from Empire Strikes Back. And they've replicated it over and over again in all the Star Warses. That's the one where Luke goes into the cave after he's speaking with Yoda. So when you're afraid to do these gold mine calls, guys, how are you ever going to grow if you're doing the same thing you've been doing? Right? Or doing it the same way. You follow me? You've got to do different things if you want different results. That's all I'm saying. 
Does that make sense? The cave you're afraid to go into is the exact one you need to go into. And then you realize, you said, well, the cave wasn't so freaking bad, <laughs> right? But you got to step into it. You got to go into that dark place that you're afraid of that you can't see. Don't worry about seeing with your physical eye. Think, see with your inner eye of understanding. That's what that means. So can I share something I've learned? I had a really good Please. call yesterday. I connected with someone on LinkedIn and she actually is a Juice Plus person. She must have misread and didn't know that I was a Juice Plus person, but I got some really good tips from her. She's a retired teacher and her recommendation was to join a BNI, a business networking group. She said it cost her probably $475 but she got 12 partners right away. She said it is booming. She gets to learn, she learns how to present. They're very helpful in teaching her how to public speak. She got in a small one, only 20 people in the first group. She recommends getting in a bigger one to challenge you more. But she said for her, totally exploded her business. Well, ask Misty, she does that all the time. I think going this. I'm in a Sears Net group. That's another kind of group you can look at. Um, the B BNI is weekly, so you have to go every single week. Um, and, and if you don't go, you have to get a, a sub. So you can only miss like three times every quarter or something like that. Um, Jason's been in BNI for 16 years. So I've been in Sears Net for probably two. And I do that one because I can it's only 30, like 32 weeks of the year. And um, they don't, you don't have to get a sub if you have to miss and all that stuff. So it's a little more lenient. It's, a, it's very similar though. Um, so the networking groups are really, can be very powerful. I've gotten a couple towers in my, my group. I've gotten, um, I haven't gotten any partners yet, but I think our group is only about 20 people, 22 people, something like that. Um, but we've also, I've also gotten a ton of orders. So it definitely is worth it. Um, and it's it great. Hold, for it holds you accountable, mm -hmm. right? Like, I think the most important thing is not just orders. You oh, yeah. have to go in there every week knowing you've got to be right. Yeah. Okay. Presenting information and sharing. And I'm also doing chiropractic with mine. So it's, it's a kind of a dual thing, but, but yes, absolutely good idea. Yep. I can connect you with Sears Sent Tooler if you want to, to see if there's a group close to you, but BNI is great too. So just no, kind I like of, use better. I would, <laughs> I would visit both and see which one has a better feel for you because each group is going to have its own personality as well. And you want to find one that feels like a really good fit for you. So I would visit first. And here's the thing too, Laurie, it's easy to go want to go where Misty is because you're comfortable with Misty, right? Well, no, I like, yeah. I like the concept of I don't get kicked out if I miss three. Oh. She said hers is more lenient, but I look at both of them. I'm, I'm open to that because my paradigm or my staffer is I have no one to talk to. This would make me talk every single week. That's yeah. what I mean, the, the accountability aspect of it, right? That's why I started going live every day. Yeah, because I have to, you know, you see, you see them and it makes me grow. Yeah. Because the more you share, the more you grow, guys. It's that's why they say giving, right? Is living it's truly more blessed to give. Because as you give, you get more back. It's absolutely, it's 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 universal. It's a law. <laughs> like so, you know, the more you're putting yourself out there and doing, the more you're gonna get back. Like Jeff Roberti, the all-time runner. He would literally get his teams rocking here and then he would fly over to Germany and, and, and live for six months to open up camp. And then he would fly to the next country. That's how he did what he did. Wow. Yeah. I mean, so we can make any, he didn't know how to speak German. <laughs> and he went into Germany and found people who could freaking speak German. It's just the questions that we ask ourselves. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I don't share, like, I have a family. I don't want to do that, but could I? Yeah. If I really made that decision, I could go do that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? That's what he did. And that's why he has what he has. Right. It's just it, the limitations are only between our ears as my dad would always say. Right. If you can think it and conceive it, you can have it. That's what Misty, how Misty's changed so much is she's done it enough to where it's starting to seep in. And you can ask her when it starts to seep in, you also want to go backwards some. But you just got to keep putting it in, putting it in, putting it in. And eventually it sticks. 
It's like when you throw mud on a wall, it'll stick. Some of it sticks, right? Not all of it, but some of it will. And then it keeps building and building and building. And one day you wake up and you're like, God dang. Yeah, I mean, like, what the heck happened? It was just a consistency to action. That's all. Taking that consistent action. No, also, like, what I mean is like, you know, like how when you're reaching out to people, guys, listen to your intuition. Like if somebody pops to your mind that you need to talk to, write that down and call them or text, do something that you immediately, that is God telling you to do so. I'm serious. Like don't second guess that. If somebody's, you're doing some studying or something and something pops to mind, you freaking write their name down immediately and you call them or text them or something. Hey, you're popping to mind. I need to connect with you or something. Just take action, right? But those are those are those gold mining nuggets, right? In these calls that Misty's talking about, you're gonna mine gold on those people. Keep your ears open and listen, right? Like thank them and then listen to what they're talking about. They'll tell you all kinds of stuff if you listen. And then you know how to approach them and help them better. Do you have any other questions before we roll? Great call. Is this helpful, guys? Just remember to put it to action. Like, so I'm doing this an hour and teaching you guys, but like in all of us getting together, right? But like, I'm still texting and reaching out to people and calling people. You've got to do the do. You can have all the seeds that you want in your hand, but you got to put them in the ground, right? Got to water them. Yeah. <clears throat> there you go. How are we doing our challenge? Everybody, did everybody make a chart? I did. Didn't do it. I can tell. Cheryl didn't do it either. <laughs> Make your chart. I'm serious. It helps. It holds me accountable. It's sitting on my desk where I work and it holds me. I'm like, oh, I need to reach out to more people. Everybody right now, grab a piece of paper, make your chart. Yep. First right thing. We'll make you do it. So reaching out, you mentioned okay. Cheryl, so Cheryl, before you do that, make your chart right now. I've got my paper right okay. here. I want okay. Okay. Yeah. So when we're talking about reaching out, <clears throat> did you say we? I might not necessarily bring up the business, but I'm reaching out to someone. <clears throat> Starting a conversation. Okay. Cheryl, you were so approachable. I've started conversations, but you know, pardon me. You were so approachable and sweet. So at church, just like you would do at church, you have a beautiful smile, wonderful personality. And that's what you do. You call them up with that kind of smile before you go and you just say something like, hey, Cheryl, you know, hey, it's it's Kenny. Hey, I just want to reach out to you. Thank you, Laura. How are you? You know, I just want to check on you and thank you for, you know, entrusting me to take this product. That's all you say. And then they will tell you the rest. Because I'm thanking you. And then they're going to say something like, oh, my God, well, thank you for calling. And they're going to be excited about it. If they're excited, wow, what do you love? You know, what are you loving about this? And then they tell you. Well, you know, if you're getting those kind of results, are there people that you know and love that can get those kind of results? Have you thought about sharing this like I am? And just like that lady, no, I don't want to sell it. Hey, absolutely no worries. Just thank you for the opportunity to take the product. And if you think of people this can value, please let us know. So I thank them. Then I let them talk back and thank me back. Once they're doing that, then I say, okay, great. What are you loving about it? And then they'll tell me what they're loving about it. Once they tell me, then I say, okay, what do you know other people that could benefit from this just like you? Who can you think of that are having those issues that could get better? And then they'll, now what I did is I opened their mind to those people. Sure. And then I say, well, have you thought about sharing this with them? Like I do. And they may say, well, no, I haven't, but Huh. Well, you know, I didn't know anything about this, Cheryl, when I got into it, but I've learned and I can totally help you share this with them. Did that answer your question, Cheryl? I don't know if you got your whole question out. <laughs> well, a couple of my conversations, I, you know, I reached out to some people I haven't talked to in a long time, but the way the conversation went, I never actually got the juice plus in, or I might have mentioned it in passing. It might have just like, planted a, a seed, I guess. Um, and 
so some of my conversations didn't really get juice plus in the conversation. I just had reached out to some people I hadn't talked to in a long time. And probably it was this that didn't end up bringing up the juice plus in the conversation. I don't. Sure. I would just say, you know, an easy way to do that is just to say, hey, you popped into my head again today, I, or my brain again today. I just wanted to share this with you. It's something that's been amazing for me. And I thought you'd like to know more about it too. Or I thought you'd like, you'd find value in it too. Right. And so that's a really easy, gentle way to saying, I'd love to share this with you. I think you're going to love it. And, and I thought of you, right. And that means something to people. So it's okay to do that. And go ahead, Kenny, you have something to add? Yeah, no, I'm sorry. Was it these people that you were calling to check on about the product or are these people you're trying to share the product with here? These Isn't are right? new conversations. New conversations. Yeah. Okay. Just remember, I mean, just I just weave it in somehow if it if it comes up, Cheryl. And if it's a cold call and you haven't talked to me in a long time, maybe you don't bring it up. And that's okay. You just like Misty saying, you're just opening that window to talk to somebody because you are thinking about them. There's not there's no lie about that. And then you get that what what this is something I learned. Maybe this will help you guys. Never I, when I would go into a restaurant as a chiropractor before I my clinic. I was just real rambunctious. Now you don't have to be like me, but Cheryl, maybe you're just like, you're just so sweet, right? So you just use your sweetness and people open to that, okay? And then I would just ask simple questions like, yeah, you know, I'm new to the area or, you know, I'm just looking for something different to do with my kids or my, you know, whatever, right? Oh, really? What do you do? Oh, well, you know, I, I do juice plus. I get them to ask me what I do. Do you see the difference? I don't call them and say, hey, I'm doing juice plus, take juice plus. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, I know some people have done that too, but I don't do that. Like, you know what I mean? I, I start up a conversation. I get them to ask me, I, I talk about them and then I get them to ask me what I do. I get intrigued. If I'm, if I'm intriguing and if I'm an exciting person, people, you track who you are and they'll want to ask you back. But just, you've got to think about these things, guys. You know what I mean? You have to, you have to construct some things and have a place where you're going doesn't mean you're going to go there, but it'll at least kind of give you a roadmap and guidance to get through. That's all. And then your confidence will raise, Cheryl, and then it will start to come out. You know what I mean? Like, that's all. But you got to do it to get comfortable with it. That's all. It's a little bit of strategy is what he's saying, right? So you want to be strategizing while you're thinking, how can I reach out to them in a way that that's true to me and, and how I love on them? And then also share what I do because I know that's going to help them. And so if you're thinking that while you're, while you're messaging them and talking with them, that's, that's just going to come through. It's going to come through. They'll feel that. And the other reason for doing this is that then even if it doesn't come up, you have a reminder on your sheets, right? And so you keep your sheets and you remember, okay, yeah, who can I check in on again? So you're not just checking in once or starting a conversation and never going back to it. You need to then have another conversation or bring something up again, or you find a video on our, you know, recordings or an audio and say, oh my gosh, I heard this. I know you mentioned you have this and this going on. This made me think of you. I wonder if it might help you. Right? Just like the lady who missed you saying with dementia. We can go on recordings. Dementia. Hey, you know what? I know you were crazy busy the other day. I know you're very busy, but this is something I learned and listened to about brain health and function. And what you said about, I couldn't remember if it was your mother or mother-in-law. I don't know. Maybe this will help. You know what I mean? And that's it. And they'll listen to it or they don't. That's not on you anymore. And if they listen and they call you back, great. But I guess I didn't know if I could count the conversations that I didn't actually bring Juice Plus up in. Am I counting those as well as conversations? If I didn't bring Juice Plus or am I just counting the Juice Plus conversations <laughs> in my 30 day chart? <laughs> you can count them all. You can count them all. Okay. Yep. All right. Here, here's the thing too, Cheryl. Do you have a goal for how many people you're trying to speak to, right? About Juice Plus. See, if you don't set a goal. I don't have my goals. Yeah. So know, know. like, and I'm not, watch this. Would you step out of somebody's house in the middle of America, get in the car and not know where you're going and just drive west? So your goal is your destination. I don't care if it's two, a hundred, just set something, guys. 
you're never going to hit something you don't have a target for. It's impossible. You have, you have, 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 have to set a target. And if you need to start small to get some confidence, do that. There's nothing wrong with that. But just set, set a goal. Does that make sense? I love you. And that's why I'm being hard on you. You have this in you. I know you do. I want you to know that I know you can do this. Okay. I mean that in the bottom of my heart. You just have to go do the do. You have to get out of your own way. So quit worrying about how you feel and think about flipping. Sure. I'll say, well, if that person knew this and they could help me, wouldn't, I want, wouldn't you want to know that? Right? So come from there. Maybe that'll help. Because I think what you're probably doing is you're like, oh, I don't want to make it about me and making, it's not about that. It's, it's about you reaching out to help them with what you now know, because you would want to know the same. You know, if somebody knew something, Cheryl was going to help your kids or grandkids, right? You would want to know that. I know you. So I think if you flip that and come from there, I think that would be a big help for you. I agree. And I just want to add, like, most of my customers are from my church. And if you have a good, you know, group at church, share it with them. I mean, you've got nothing to lose. They either want it or they don't. Just think of Jesus, right? Did he preach Christianity to people? And a lot of people didn't want it, right? And some did. But he didn't quit. You know what I mean? Like, that's just... Look at that. Look for those examples, right? That's what this whole call has been about. Look for the examples that you want to go towards. Don't be that person, but take some skills and mindset and how they look at things and incorporate that into your life. And you got to do it daily. You know, it's like people say, I think it was Zig Ziglar. He said, look, he goes, what did he say? He was talking about a good attitude. He goes, you know, it's like bathing. You got to do it daily, right? Motivation or whatever. You got to do these things daily. You have to create that habit. So you guys have any other questions? Great call though. You guys got some nuggets. So go mine some gold, set some calls up. Misty, we'll do those later, young ladies. So, okay. You guys have a blessed day and week. I'm proud of you guys. Keep rocking. Bye guys. Bye. Thanks everybody. Bye, Kenny. Bye, Bye.